Please don't, <clears throat> please don't make me cry now. I don't want to cry. I'm going to cry. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's hot out there, people. We want to get back and get a beer or something. I want to say to Joe Durso before I start, or whoever wants to listen, that all of those computer things that came back from Davy Johnson, all his lineups had him hitting fourth. <laughs> and with Frank, Brooks, and Boog on that team, I didn't think they were right, so I started my own. <laughs> Thank you, Ed. Hall of Famers, my wonderful family, and ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to try to do this without too much emotion, but as today as I stand at this podium in baseball's hallowed city, I'm going to try and convey my thoughts and feelings to all of you, the baseball fans of America. First of all, I have a tremendous feeling of humility, and this comes from the fact that I'm standing in front of the greatest baseball players and baseball people who ever lived. From the time I was real young, right to this day, these are the people I looked up to, idolized, and I worshiped. I remember as a youngster going to Sportsman Park in St. Louis and getting a seat as high up as I could in a pavilion just to see how far Ted Williams was going to hit his home runs out of the ballpark. And that's how I learned how important a three-run homer was. I remember going to the same park as a teenager in the early 40s when the Cardinals won 100 games three straight years. Stan the Man, Enos Slaughter, Red Shandies, all were my heroes. How could any baseball fan, and believe me, you know it, not be humbled to be included in this group of gentlemen? Believe me, it's overwhelming. My next feelings are those of Thanksgiving. And if I mentioned all the people, and I'm in here as a manager, that deserve to be thanked for my being here, we'd still be here during tomorrow's ball game. However, there are those special people who I feel have to be recognized, and to the people that I fail to mention, please forgive me and understand. And it's first to the Veterans Committee, who took the time to research my record and felt that it was worthy of this great honor. Next to my mother and father, who were deceased, who had me at the ballpark regularly before I was old enough for kindergarten. And also thanks to them for encouraging me to stay in baseball throughout a 20-year minor league career. Next to my wife, Mariana, who I want to stand, please, just for a second. <clears throat> who was always there with encouragement, who listened to me rant and rave when things didn't seem right, and taking care of broken water heaters, broken plumbing, and everything else that happened when a baseball person is on the road. For that, I want to thank her and tell her I love her in front of everybody. my children, Mike, Rhonda, Terry, and Kim, please stand up. They understood why their dad was not there on graduation day, prom night, or all the other important days of their lives because I was on the road at some ballpark. Being inducted as a manager now is somewhat different than being inducted as a player. The gentlemen sitting behind me and all the other players enshrined are there because they used their abilities and their talents to the best of their ability. A 56-game hitting streak, 500 home runs, 300 victories as a pitcher, 400-plus batting average, and other records too, too numerous to mention. As a manager who has just been bestowed the honor of sharing a space in baseball history with this illustrious group, the feelings of humility and thankfulness arise again. Thankful that I was fortunate enough to manage four players already enshrined in the hall, Frank and Brooks Robinson, 
Reggie Jackson, and of course the gentleman I had more arguments with than my wife, Mariana, Jim Palmer. <laughs> I mention these four players by name because they are in the Hall of Fame, but I throw, oh, thanks, and all the fans out there know it, to every Baltimore player who ever put on a uniform. I was also fortunate enough to break in two rookies who I feel are going to be sitting up here someday, Cal Ripken Jr. and Eddie Murray. <laughs> Another reason for my being here today is the fact that I was blessed with outstanding coaches. Frank Robinson again, Billy Hunter, Jim Fry, George Stoller, Cal Ripken Sr., Elrod Hendricks, George Bamberger, and if there was a Hall of Fame for pitching coaches, George Bamberger would be in it, and Ray Miller. Most all of them went on to be successful managers themselves. I'm proud that I was associated with these types of gentlemen, and I was lucky to have used their expertise. I'm also proud of the fact that some of my players who played for me have gone on to be successful managers. Dave Johnson, Don Baylor, last year's National League Manager of the Year, Lou Pinella, Johnny Oates, and believe me, I hope I haven't uh, missed anybody. Now, just shortly, how does it happen that a person who tried for 10 years to reach the major leagues as a player and another 10 years as a minor league manager, a manager who was just happy to be in baseball, ever reached the major leagues? Took a lot of guts by certain people. The people who were not afraid to give an unknown a chance. Harry Dalton, who was then general manager, had to convince Frank Cashin, the president of operations, who in turn had to convince the owner, Jerry Hoffberger, that I was ready to do the job. Must have taken a lot of courage for them to turn the Major League Club over to me. And if they knew how nervous I was, they might have had second thoughts. But as I stand here today and say thanks to them for the opportunity, I feel I justified their confidence in me. And now it's time to recognize a group of baseball people that very seldom receive credit for a job well done. This group being the umpires of the American and National League. <laughs> I'm serious when I say their integrity and honesty is and must be beyond reproach. They accept the players and managers are, and they never let it affect their next call. Now counting balls and strikes and close plays on the bases, they must have made over a million calls while I was managing, and except for those 92 times I disagreed, they got the other ones right. <clears throat> so to them, I want to say thanks for your patience, understanding, and keep up the good work, because the game can't be played without umpires. Going to get shorter, and speaking of the game today, I've been asked by many fans and people from the media how it's changed. Well, it hasn't changed. It's still three strikes, you're out, four balls, you walk, three outs to an inning, and the team that gets the most runs win. Now, maybe there are more specialists on each team now, with middle relievers, set-up men, and closers. The games might be a little longer because of this, but it creates more excitement, more chance for second-guessing, and certainly makes it a little tougher on the hitters up at home plate. I think today's fans like it because I read attendance records are being set every year. And another question, are today's players better or not as good as those players we older fans knew and remembered? There are many comparisons that can be made, but we'll have to go back a long way and then separate them by decades or generations. And I'm going to name just a few in each time period. Baseball had Babe Ruth, Tris Speaker, Ty Cobb. A few years later, Joe DiMaggio, Ted Williams, Stan the Man, overlapping but carrying on in another decade, Mickey Mantle, Willie Mays, and Duke Snyder. And that's not to mention Frank Robinson again and Hank Aaron. You know, today they still have a way to go, but there's some good ones. You have got Barry Bonds, Ken Griffey Jr., Albert Bell, Mo Vaughn, Frank Thomas, and I've only mentioned a few, and most of them all were outfielders. So I want to get off of my speech here for just a minute, but just in another category. You could do it at almost any position. Uh, 
Waller Johnson, Bob Feller, then Sandy Colfax, uh, Nolan Ryan, and I don't want to forget Jim Palmer, he'll write another bad book about me. There you go, Jimmy. My point here is, how can anybody say what era or time period produced the best players? They were all great players, and they got the best from their abilities. And 20 to 30 years from now, I hope someone will be saying the same thing about today's players. And if I could, if I could assemble all the major league players today and offer them some words of advice or at least a few suggestions, now I'm talking to the players, I'd say the following. First, appreciate the God-given talents that you've been blessed with. Everyone knows how hard you work to become a major leaguer. But if it only took hard work, there's thousands of people just like myself who would have or would be playing Major League Baseball today. You major leaguers, and I'm talking to them, have been given something special. And secondly, please recognize the fact that since you are special, there are baseball fans who look up to you, root for you, and believe it or not, even pray for you. I ask you to give them your respect and to appreciate their support. Some athletes of the day have said they don't want to be role models, and I can understand their feelings sometimes. So to them, I would say, don't worry about being a role model, but be a solid, upstanding citizen. Be a role model parent to your children, and don't do anything that might bring embarrassment to your parents, your children, or other members of your family. And if you can accomplish those think, simple things, you'll have done everything that any baseball fan would expect of you. Now I'd like to say, and it looks like, now I'd like to say that the 35 some odd years I spent in baseball flew by so fast that I didn't even know I was getting older. The time was so enjoyable especially when you're lucky enough to be making a living doing something you love. There were some hard times, but believe me, the good far outweighed the bad. And in closing, in closing, let me tell you, I'm proud of my record. I'm proud of the fact that I was even considered to be in the Hall of Fame, let alone voted in. I'm proud of the fact that I spent my whole major league career in one city. And for that, I would like to thank the wonderful fans of Baltimore for letting me stay.